I am Stacy A. Cross, and there is no E in my, my name. name. Comfort killers worldwide, I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. And today, you see the airplane on the hoodie. Okay, let's not mistake this for anyone else but the Evan Carmichael. We're so happy to have you on the Comfort Killers show. Welcome. I like, well, I have, I have two E's in my name, so I'll make up for both of us. I, I, I love the energy. This is great. Comfort this is, killers. Well, this is what we do. We do comfort on a daily basis, and I'm ready to get uncomfortable with you, and we're going to dive right in, Evan. Um, first of all, I read your bio. I'm intrigued because you started at an early age. When I was playing in dirt still, you were, a, you, you were helping raising millions as a VC. Um, other than that, you built and sold a biotech software company at the age of 19. How amazing is that? How amazing? Are we on? Are we on? Is this thing on? There we go. Yeah, I, I lost you for a second there, but, I, but I'm here. I'm good. I don't Beautiful. know what happened there on the internet. All right. Beautiful. Okay. I know you're in Toronto, so... It's, 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 it's easily explainable. But yeah, you started at a, such an early age. Tell me, what's that like? I mean, we were just jumping in the clubs. Other people are like, you know, in school or doing whatever, just messing around with girls or, or boys. Why were you so intrigued with entrepreneurship, Evan? You know, growing up, I didn't think I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. It wasn't really on my radar. I think I had a lot of entrepreneur tendencies. I had a lot of little side projects I was working on. My parents always encouraged me to do whatever I was interested in. They always helped me along with my path. Uh, but I wanted to be a banker. Like my high school yearbook said, it, banker. Where are you going to be in 10 years? I'm going to be a banker. That's, that's what I thought. That was, that was making it, being a banker, VP at a bank. Um, and so I don't know. I think, I think if you have an idea, if you're curious about something, you owe it to yourself to just explore it and try it. Because, you know, I think, I think the greatest basketball player in the world isn't Michael Jordan. It's a manager at Starbucks because he never picked up a basketball. Mm. He had that idea and he never did anything with it. Uh, and so I think, you know, I really, I, behind me, I got pictures of my parents. I'm about seven or eight years old there. And they always told me that uh, to believe in myself, belief comes from them. And if you have some kind of interest you know, you're not sure about it. Like at the beginning, you're not sure. It's just a curiosity. Like, hey, I want to start my own YouTube channel. I'm going to start my own show. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to, whatever it is, just start. Just do it. Just so you don't have regret. Right. You're not that Starbucks manager instead of Michael Jordan. Like you got, you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. You got to find that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree with that. Now, you know, you believe in entrepreneurs. You set up an organization, a company that drives a lot of inspiration and motivation for entrepreneurship. So you are an entrepreneur expert, so to speak. You know, it's so funny because in personal development and self-improvement, the basis of this brand, you know, when I first started, I needed that motivation and that quick inspiration to get me going. So where did I go? I went to YouTube and boom, I stumbled on top 10. Top 10s for everyone, top 10. And I was like, wow, uh, you know, at, at first I didn't know who you were, but I just loved the content that you were dishing out. They were easy, digestible information. And also, just to expand a little bit more on my background, when I first came on the scene, I started writing articles for Evan Carmichael, and I'm, I'm here interviewing Evan Carmichael, which is amazing. So, I mean, what was your inspiration to start a personal brand with building up for entrepreneurs? What was it? I mean, it's Evan Carmichael, but then it's for entrepreneurs. Yeah, it was an accident. It wasn't part of my vision. Uh, I sold my first business. I was 22. Uh, I got asked to speak at a whole bunch of different events. And I didn't know what I wanted to do, to be honest, with my life. And when I started speaking to entrepreneurs at different events, you know, one of the first ones I did, there was three people for a free event at the YMCA. Yeah. And uh, I just loved it. 
I never, I didn't know how I'd ever make money out of it. You know, if only three people show up to a free thing at the Y, like how are you ever going to turn that into a business? It didn't, it didn't matter to me. Uh, I just, I loved it. I loved helping entrepreneurs. So that kind of fills my soul. You know, I, I, I believe in people more than they believe in themselves. Mm. And I think entrepreneurs are going to be the ones that solve all the world's major problems. I don't think it's going to be our president or your president or, or uh, you know, big corporations. It's going to be entrepreneurs. Like entrepreneurs solve problems. And so if I can have a half a percent improvement on a billion entrepreneurs, that's major world impact. And so it just it gets me going every day. I started the top 10 series because I wanted to be around greatness. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be around people that inspired me on a daily basis and so, you know, maybe I got to listen to the Comfort Killers on a regular basis too. Sounds yeah. like a quality show there. Maybe we'll do a top 10 on Stacey Cross. Uh, but I wanted to be around greatness on a daily basis because I don't wake up every day like, yes, yes. Yeah. That's not how I start my day. And so I got to get up into that zone regularly and i find just being around like i have great people in my life my parents and great people around me but like who's who's really pushing hard how do i how do i be around elon musk and steve Jobs mm. every day like i want that i want to be thinking at that level and so uh you know uh, until elon musk comes up with a coaching program uh this is the best that's out there and so Luckily, other people enjoyed it. I made it personally for myself, and it's great that uh, people like you and other entrepreneurs have, have uh, enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it definitely has uh, been a staple. You know, when I need that extra oomph, what you're talking about, the extra piece of motivation in the morning, you hit YouTube up, and it's just good to hear other greats, I mean, legends, talk about something that you feel so strongly on. So thank you for creating that. Now, as a comfort killer, it's all about getting uncomfortable, and I'm sure you had some roadblocks I'm sure you had some pitfalls and some, you know, you're ready to throw the towel in. You're like, man, I'm not going to do this thing. It's, it's too much. It's massive. You know, tell us a time where, you know, you had to get uncomfortable, where you were on the brink of failure and you turned it around. Maybe something you had to do to get uncomfortable to turn it into a success. You know, I really appreciate you, you bringing that up and, and having a show on it because I don't think we talk about it enough. Uh, I didn't expect entrepreneurship to be as hard as it was when I first started. There's a lot of the success stories and you, you watch the videos and read the articles like, oh yeah, this person made millions of dollars off this idea. Like, I, I'm, you know, I could do that. I'm pretty smart. I could do that. And then you get started and, and no matter how, how worst case scenario you plan in your head, it's like it's worse than your worst case scenario. Mm. And uh, every entrepreneur thinks about quitting multiple times at some point, and we don't talk, we don't talk about it because we're always putting on our, our positive face, our optimistic face, but then who do you talk to about the big problems? And so, uh, you know, thank you for doing that on, on your show. For me, in my first business, I sucked at the start, man. You know, we were making $300 a month, me. I was making $300 a month and had to decide between like the one thing I could go to with my friends because I couldn't afford the pizza and the beer or the bowling or whatever it was yeah. to go out. So like one event per month. And I, I was too embarrassed to tell my friends that I was struggling, right? It was, it was I'm busy, uh, you know, entrepreneur lifestyle. I'm, I'm, I got to hustle hard here, guys. I can't do anything. But really, it's like, I just, I can't, I would love to go, but I don't have the, I don't have 20 bucks to go and join you guys. You know, I was, I was too, too ashamed at that time at, you know, 19, 20 to be able to uh, have the self-confidence to do that. Um, there was a point in that business where I told my partner I quit. It was just, wow. it was too hard. Like, you know, what, when you're not making money, it's easy to start getting into disagreements on what you should be doing next. You know, when things are rolling, it's like, hey, things are good, but like things are not working. Like this is not happening right now. We've got to find a different way to stand. And so, you know, my business partners and I disagreed and uh, I said, you know what, like, I, I just felt so worthless. I felt like I was putting an effort. I could understand if I wasn't hustling, not getting results. That makes sense. But like how every day I was grinding and it was not getting any kind of results. Like what's, I feel like a worthless human being. Like I'm contributing zero. I felt so bad about myself. And so I said, I, I want to do something that has some kind of meaning because like, I'm tired of waking up and doing this. And I told my partner that I quit over the phone and then you know it was one of the worst nights of my life uh and i woke up the next day and i just thought i can't like i i can't quit on this i have to i have to just find a different way to stand and uh went back 
we worked out of my partner's condo. I worked out at his dining room table and I showed up at his condo the next day and we just went back to work. You know, that's, that's part of the lumps you take, but it's, being an entrepreneur, especially in the startup days are one of the, it could be one of the most soul crushing experiences that you have in your life period. It's, it's one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life, starting the company. And uh, it's good to have some expectations of that going in because otherwise you get just dumpstered on uh, mostly by yourself. No, that's absolutely true. I'm, I'm so happy that you brought that up and shared that story because you've probably just spoken to about 99.9% .9 of the entrepreneurs starting up and really what it is on the inside, what they're feeling, that everyday uphill battle just, just continue going on for that passion, that dream of yours. And there's been many times, even in starting the Comfort Killers, where I'm like, man, I'm putting in loads and loads of en energy and the books say I should be successful by now. You know, the, the, the gurus are saying that I don't need to do all this work. So I'm so happy that you brought that to the attention. That yes, it is, it is a difficult uh, pasture, but once you get past that difficulty with that, that endurance and that stamina, you're going to get there. And so I appreciate that. And this question is just came in from a comfort killer. His name is Albert Polanco. And I want to spend a, send a special shout out to him because he just wrote, published his first book. It's called Your Life Design Blueprint. And he loves you. And he said, you know, he watched tons and tons of your video, tons and tons of your content. And he said, you've interviewed many, many, many people, many entrepreneurs, many successful people in the industry. And who has a special place in your heart? Who has impacted you the most? What did they teach you? So first off, Albert, thank you for that love and congrats on the new book. Send me a copy. I want to, I want to take a read. Maybe uh, we'll do some promotion of it because you are a comfort killer, super, super fan, and took the effort to ask a question. Um, I play from both perspectives on this one. So one, I think that the people who've had the most influence on me in my life are my parents, much more than any, any business person that I've interviewed. They didn't teach me anything about business, but they taught me how to be a human being, believe mm -hmm. from them, how I treat people, how I live my life comes from them. And so if anybody, my main core values come from them. From there, I've learned something from everybody. There are some people who've had a bigger impact than others. Some of them are behind me on the wall. I've got Steve Jobs and Howard Schultz and AP Janini and Kanye West. And there's a bunch of these people who've had more of an impact than others. But I don't have ambitions to be the next anybody. Like, I don't want to be the next Elon Musk. I want to be the best Evan Carmichael. And the way to do that is to take bits and pieces from all of these different people. Yes. Um, so that's what I encourage you to do too. Like any, if you are aspiring to be the next anybody, then, then you're, you're cheating yourself because you're only going to be a junior version of somebody else where if you can learn from a, a Jobs and an Oprah and a whoever it is and take a little bit of piece of that and say, hmm, I should explore that path, it helps you become the best version of you. And so most of it comes from my parents and then I take little pieces from different people and I think what most people do is they see the negative side. They'll look at, they'll look at a Kanye and say, well, that guy's crazy. And they'll look right. at a Steve Jobs and say, well, he was a terrible manager. And you just point out the negative flaws in those people. Say, well, I don't, like, don't take what doesn't serve you. Take the one thing from them that can serve you to help you become great. You can learn a lot from your enemies. You can learn a lot from the people who you massively disrespect if they've had success. Because there's like one or two things that they did that can make you better. I love that. Uh, and I agree 100%. And speaking of that, you're saying take little bits and pieces, almost putting the bigger picture together for yourself. And um, you, so you got loads and loads of data. I mean, if anything, all the CVs that you have on uh, YouTube, you've compiled a good amount of successful behaviors and habits. What's one commonality, one trait, one thing that you have noticed and have observed and maybe things that you've implemented, one thing from all, everyone that you put out already. I love it. I'm actually, I'm, I'm working on my next book. That's, that's the topic. We're taking the, the most popular 500 rules and condensing it down to the 10. 10, yeah. Uh, so so that's, that's a sneak peek for Comfort Killer boom, boom. audience. But uh, one of the things I would say that, that all of these people have in common. It's not that they came from wealthy families. It's not that they had great education. It's not that they had a supportive or unsupportive parents. It's not that they studied with a lot of money. It's the number one most important lesson they all have in common is they did something they're passionate about. And it's the most, you know, boring and cliche advice, but starting a business is so insanely hard that 
you're going to quit unless you absolutely love what you're doing. Like if Stacy doesn't enjoy interviewing people, this isn't going anywhere. I'm you know? done. I would have hung it up a long time ago, but like, you got to love it. Right. And, and even though like podcasting or YouTube, you know, is a top marketing strategy that you need to do this year, 2017, if you don't love the process. So I love having a goal and I think all these people have goals, but more important than the goal is actually enjoying the work to get there. If you have a goal and you're going to say, oh, I just want to hit that goal. and I'll do anything to get there. You're never going to hit that goal. But if you enjoy the work and enjoy the process, enjoying the grind of getting to that goal, enjoying climbing the mountain, not just trying to get to the top of the mountain. That's where all these people have that in common. And so I think it's really important because I think most people, most entrepreneurs, they fail in a big reason is because they're just chasing the opportunity as opposed to actually having a deep passion for the work they're doing. Love that. And just to, just to reiterate, so, uh, three of your goal, goals I have here is a huge one. This is massive. To help one billion entrepreneurs, the process and the work that comes to get to that level, as well as the, the, the change and the, the growth that you're going to get, the expansion that you're going to get to get to that level, you got to love it. So one of uh, Evan's goals to help one billion entrepreneurs to spread the word about finding your one word, which we're going to get into shortly. And number three is to provide value and impact continuously throughout the journey here. So, you know, before we get into the question about entrepreneurs and the, you know, we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the comfort killer starting their business. Talk to me about your one word. So the idea here is I think a lot of people are walking around feeling like they have greater potential, like they haven't hit their ceiling. doesn't mean that you're in the mud and, and, and your life sucks. And you know, there's, there's a lot of people who are there too, but there's a lot of people who just know there's another level of they're not hitting and they don't know how to get there. And that was me. You know, I had, I had a successful business and sold it and I started another business that had success, but I felt like God, there's more. I know there's more. I know I'm not doing the thing that I, that I should be doing fully. And so it just comes down to self-awareness. And I believe that every human being has a single most important core value. And I want to distill that down to one word. Mm. And if you can't, then typically the people who can't do that are, are you know, super perfectionists and overcomplicate things so they don't end up actually achieving the goals that they're after. When you understand what your most important core value is, then you can start to design a life and design a business to be around those kinds of same people more, to work with those kinds of customers more, to create products that further that mission more. Yeah. And so it all starts through that lens. So for, for me, it's believe it came from my parents. It's who you have always been and always will be in the future. Yeah. And everything that I started to do around believe, like believe oozes out of all my content. You know, you like my videos. I appreciate that. Yeah. They're always positive. It's never here are the 10 stupidest things that Kanye West have ever said. Right. That may even make me a bigger YouTube star if I went and started doing that kind of stuff. But I want, I want you to feel some belief coming out of the videos I make, coming out of this interview. Like it's how I live my life. And so when you have that, it becomes the compass for what you should do in your life and in your business. And so uh, it started off as a crazy idea. It ended up working out for me and my company. I interviewed people across America who had built from $50,000 full-time income businesses to multi-billion dollar businesses around using their one word. Like this is something. So I decided to write the book about it. Beautiful. And uh, you know, I always believe that uh, you are, you're born with an inner guidance system, a, a biological GPS. And I believe what you're saying here is that core value that who you are could kind of, take you any place that you want to be just just built around that word and i love that yours is believe because it's a powerful word now i believe that our entrepreneurs is going to get something out of this last question here for you evan carmichael and you know what i i know you probably got a salsa lesson coming up today so i won't take too much of your time but i want to jump in that what's the deal with salsa man when did you start that when did it become such a an obsession for you I'm a big believer in trying anything once. Uh, when people ask me to do something, I'm a big believer in just saying yes, whether it's trying activity, whether it's trying a new food. Mm. I just, I think you shut yourself off. I think in general, we shut ourselves down from opportunities because we just don't see it working where I think it's important to have an open mind about things and then try it once and don't keep going back if you hate it. Yeah. And so I tried, I said yes to going mountain climbing and uh, rock climbing and, and I hated it because 
I'm afraid of heights and like yeah. the, the, the thing was the, the harness was in my crotch and like, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it but I tried it right uh, I tried salsa dancing and I just fell in love with it uh, and on paper it's a it's a it's the stupidest thing ever you know I'm six foot two so I take giant steps I don't speak Spanish I didn't grow up with music I had no dancing rhythm or background like the typical two left feet kind of guy uh so what am i doing taking salsa it's, and it's one of those things that we would easily discount ourselves from like who am i to do salsa who am i to write a book who am i to go and do a youtube channel who am i to ask for people to do interviews with me like who am i and as long as you're stuck in that zone you stay in the comfort zone and you gotta go and crush that right so uh so i said yes to salsa and I didn't have a lot of expectations. I think a lot of times too, we put like, this has to be the thing. Right. And then you put so much pressure on it. Like if you're dating somebody and like on the first date, you have to decide if you're going to marry them or not. Right. There's so much pressure that I try to remove that. I'm going to go and buy fun. And if I'm going to, if I have fun, I'm going to go and do it again. And I just, I fell in love with it. I sucked at the start. Just terrible. Uh, but I, I fell in love with it. It's been, I don't know, it's been 12 15 years, I don't even remember, um, yeah. invested into a, a, a salsa dance business. I now own the business. I met wow. my wife through the business. Um, so it's been a big part of my life where I'm on paper, I would have never thought, never, never in a million years, like salsa dancer, salsa entrepreneur. Uh, and it's just, you explore and say yes to the things at least once, and then you see where it goes. I love that. No, I, I love that. And, and if you had said no, look at all the beauty that, that came out of it now. I mean, so much that you've invested in that part of your life and look at the beauty that it's created. So I, I love that you busted out your comfort zone with those two left feet of yours. But now I know these entrepreneurs are banging on my door, Evan. They want to know one question. And the question is, you've been crushing it on YouTube, right? You've been crushing it. Your video, your branding, everything is on point. And a lot, late, a lot of gurus, a lot of uh, experts have been saying, you know, at least in the last year, especially when I came on the scene, you have got to have content on all your social channels. And if you're not getting attention, then you're not doing nada. You're not doing nada, okay? So where do you think the focus should be as far as content creation and lead generation for entrepreneurs, for authors, for digital marketers, for everyone in this, this category that's just coming out on the scene using technology to expand? It's a great question. Uh, I'm going to add some context to it. Yeah. I think it really depends on your style and it depends on where your customers are. And so the good news is it's never been easier to reach customers. It's never been easier. If you have talent, if you have skills, it's never been easier to reach them. There's nobody holding the gate closed to you anymore. You don't need to go and buy a Super Bowl commercial anymore. Like it's never been easier. If you are good at what you do, it's never been easier for your message to spread. I would do an inventory to see what are you good at and what do you enjoy doing and what do you want to get better at. For me, I love video. I would much rather do this video interview than to write an article for the Wall Street Journal or, or whatever publication, right? Like I would much rather do a video than write. It's me. I like it more. I wasn't very good at making video when I first started. We've done 5,000 videos on the YouTube channel, 4,000 are public. Uh, but kind of just taking inventory. What are you good at? Where do you want to focus? Then think about where is my audience going to be? So, you know, YouTube is, there's a lot of people on YouTube. If you're selling B2B though, like maybe you want to focus more on LinkedIn, right? If you're selling to certain niches, like marketing 101 is you want to be where your customers are. Where are your customers hanging out? That's where you want to be. And so combining those two things, now video is everywhere now, right? It, didn't, it wasn't when I first started, but video is on Twitter now and video is on Instagram and video is on, you know, it's, it's on every platform. I like YouTube because the content lives forever. You know, I want to create meaningful work that my grandkids are going to want to watch. I want to, I want to, my grandkid, I want to watch this episode of the Comfort Killers, you know, and say, man, Grandpa Evan was awesome. You know, <laughs> I, want, I want the stuff I make to live forever. Yeah. And so YouTube is the best platform for me for that. It matches everything. It's video. There's a big entrepreneur reach there. who's my audience and the content is forever. If I post something on Facebook or Instagram, it's like an instant quick hit, but then it, it dies off. You don't remember yep. what somebody posted a year ago on Twitter or on Facebook. Yeah. So that works for me. You gotta think it works for you. The last thing you wanna do is feel like here's what most people do: they go and they get an account everywhere because you gotta get the you gotta get the handle, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a good strategy, like just because you never know, right? So just 
take take your name or take your company name. You know, familiars everywhere and all the platforms. Yeah. It, so you don't get you know like eight million dollars to buy this name back. You know, you you got it. Um, so that's a good idea. But then don't try to do everything at the start. This is what most people do. They post everywhere, and every piece of content sucks. And so you're spinning your wheels. And so find the platform that makes the most sense for you. you know, I started on Twitter because people were talking about my business and I wasn't a part of the conversation. Mm. So at least I could go on, like your step one is just listen and just recognize your champions. So before even posting content, if somebody's shouting you out on Instagram, even if you have nothing, like people will watch your show, love it. Say, man, Ben Evan was awesome, man. Holy cow, what a great interview. And they're gonna post that to Instagram. Maybe you're not that active on Instagram. Maybe you don't do anything on Instagram yet, but they'll still, they'll still tag you. If you have an account, just recognizing those people say, Hey, Julia, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm so thankful that you like my content. Thank you so much. Yep. Before you even worry about your own content strategy, just empowering your audience who's already cheering you on mm. so that they can continue. Cause you say that they're going to do it again. Right. They're going to be like, man, Stacey, yeah. about me. That's Stacey. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a loyal friend now and I'm going to share it even more. So these people have audiences. You want to empower them more. So, and you're listening, you're seeing, okay, you know, I'm getting a lot of traction on this Instagram thing. You know, people are tagging me, they're talking about me. I guess you uh, dabble in here and post a little bit. And then you start to find your rhythm. You start to see where the platform is that best represents you. So longer term, sure, you could try to be everywhere, but I think in the short term, just get the, get the handles so you're not, you're not losing out on your name. And then pick the one platform that you can start with that you can have a really big impact on and uh, crush it before moving on. Awesome advice. Thank you so much. Give us your uh, favorite book. Uh, you got a favorite book, top one? Uh, my, my 1A and 1B is uh, 4 Hour Work Week, Tim Ferriss. I love that book. It helped yeah. me a lot. Uh, and then this book called Radicals and Visionaries, which I think is out of print. So that's why I have a, a 1B. I, I used to read, it's basically short stories of different entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I would read one story per day, kind of like what my videos do for me now. Yeah. And just start my day reading a famous entrepreneur story, and it kind of got me inspired and uh, gave me some ideas. So, I got. Yeah. no, thank you so much, guys. You heard it here. We learned why he did it, what he did, how he did it, and what he's continuing to do on a daily basis to to reach the billion. That's